Hi, and welcome back for uh, lecture two of uh, E375. Uh, this lecture, we're going to introduce the basic concepts uh, of, uh, of computer programming and give a very brief introduction to how some of those really basic concepts, very, really low level concepts, are implemented in R. So, one thing that's really important to understand about computers. Uh, is that they are actually fundamentally dumb machines. Uh, they really don't actually know how to do that many unique things. And the basic logic of how computers work has been actually around for, for well over a century. Uh, you know, the, the ideas underlying today's supercomputers are fundamentally no different than the ideas, for example, in, in Babbage's analytical engine, which was a mechanical computer or, or this Commodore 64, uh, which I learned to code on as a kid, which you know had 64K of memory and, and no hard drive. So even though you know today's modern computers are faster and they have a, a lot more memory, um, they fundamentally don't actually know how to do anything different. So what do computers actually know how to do? First, uh, computers know arithmetic. You know, they can add, subtract, multiply, divide, and, you know, do additional uh, arithmetic operations kind of based on, you know, fundamentally addition and multiplication. Um, they know how to do simple logical comparisons. So you can set, you know, one bit to true, another bit to false, and they can ask, are, are both true? Is one true or the other? Um, they're able to essentially make, uh, what's called conditional branching. So go down one path based on some logical comparison or go down another path uh, based on another comparison. So if something, if some operation is true, do this. If it's not true, do that. You know, the, the decision-making is, is based on very, very fundamental low-level logic. Uh, not really any problem solving, but it is tr simple, you know, dichotomous true, false choices. Uh, and they're able to set up loops, which means they're able to uh, repeat calculations uh, over and over again, you know, often changing you know, small bits each loop. And they have this ability to store numbers. So they have this concept of computer memory where they can stick uh, all these bits and numbers uh, from the co computation that it's doing. So this is this idea of storing things. Um, so that would lead to the obvious question. If, if computers are dumb and really all they need to know how to do is uh, you know, some basic arithmetic and some conditional choices based on very simple low level logical comparisons, uh, why is it that computers rule the world? And let's be honest, they really do. I mean, they're, they're just such an integral part of everyday life uh, that society really is super reliant on them at this point. Um, so first reason that computers rule the world is they fundamentally don't get bored and they don't get tired. So if you ask them to do these basic comparisons and arithmetical operations, they will keep doing them. And, you know, a million computations in, they are just as good at it as the first. They have not gotten tired. They have not gotten bored. They're they'll just keep doing these simple calculations uh, on scales that are, are truly unimaginable. Uh, second, they have great memory. In general, they don't forget things. You know, you can store, at this point, truly enormous amounts of information in computers. So, for example, in our Department of Earth and Environment, uh, we have over a petabyte of, of storage in the department uh, for the, the work the, the, the department does. Primarily, a lot of that is remote sensing data. And importantly, they are programmable. So, unlike a lot of uh, tools that predated the computer, which are often built to solve a specific problem, like a calculator, um, they are programmable, which makes them ultimately very flexible machines that can solve many, many problems, because you can reprogram them to, to solve many different computational problems or, or many different operations. So given that computers are fundamentally dumb, uh, the process of learning how to code is fundamentally a process of learning how to problem solve. And to me, that what's, that's what makes coding interesting. 
It's what makes it exciting and what makes it ultimately a creative process, which is just trying to figure out how to take a complex problem that you need to solve and breaking that complex problem down into smaller and smaller steps that eventually get down to the things computers actually know how to do, arithmetic, conditional decision-making, loops. Uh, and then once you've broken down those complex problems into very simple, small problems to encapsulate these code in functions, essentially bubbles around code, that makes it easy to reuse those, uh, those solutions once you figure them out. And so because we can encapsulate code, problems that people solved you know, you know, decades and decades ago, we can still reuse those solutions in code and build upon them and build upon them and build upon them in a way that kind of is clearly accelerated. You know, there's now so many, so many computational resources out there, so many different libraries and software and, and whatnot uh, that is, is truly outstanding. Uh, and amazing. And it, there's so many things you don't have to reinvent from these low level functions because people have figured out solutions and made resources available. So now you can you know, literally grab packages that can do you know, you know, out of the box complex machine learning or sophisticated statistical analyses or visualization or uh, number crunching or, or, or GIS or remote sensing. All of these things are, are just built on the fact that people you know, spent decades and decades and decades of time coding up solutions to problems. Um, so as we start to dive down this path to learning R, I will say that, you know, a lot of the resources will rely on a uh, common class, for example, the first lab is a basic R primer. It's already up in Blackboard. There's a lot of R manuals out there, a lot of search functions built into R itself, which we'll go over in lab one. Uh, I also say that the syllabus at, particularly at the end of the syllabus, lists a lot of other resources. A few others have been posted on Blackboard uh, that kind of help you go beyond uh, just what's in the course. And obviously, you know, you can hit Google, you can hit library uh, to find many other books and resources on, on learning R beyond just what we are provided in class. But there, there's actually quite a bit at the end of the syllabus. Uh, so from jumping off from here, the next couple lectures are going to cover kind of the nuts and bolts of those simple uh, low-level things that the computers know how to do. Again, you know, arithmetic, conditionals, uh, loops, and functions. Thanks.